one of the key uses we see for this is on PDF files. So cross, as part of CrossMark, uh, CrossDrops created a tool, which we're going to make openly available, uh, to add the CrossMark to a PDF file. So if this CrossMark existed up here on the right, the user downloads it, they have it on their machine for six months. When they click on it, it's acting as, uh, there's some metadata embedded in the PDF, but when the user clicks on it with an internet connection, it would go out and check the latest status of this document. So, in this case, there are actually some updates available. It gives a link to the update, but it also gives a link to, permanent link, to the uh, version of record on the publisher's site, because they're sitting in the PDF, they want to go back and see the correction and get the most updated information about, uh, about the article. The other case we have is uh, probably more of a less likely to happen, but if the content is actually not on the publisher site, so you can see that the, the um, uh, URL up here, this is, uh, this is a Wiley journal, I think, um, and uh, they, uh, it's not on the Wiley website. If there were this situation, the Crossmark system can actually then say, I don't know, this website um, goes to the publisher maintained version. That, that's the, the better copy. So Crossmark cross uh, isn't intended to be any kind of uh, digital rights management. Uh, it doesn't offer any protection against content being copied or illegally hosted somewhere. Uh, but it's a way for publishers to emphasize um, where their content should, you know, should exist. There's some publishers who say, "Well, my web, my content is only going to appear on a couple of websites. So if it's not on that website, then this message might come up." Certainly, wouldn't stop somebody just taking the content and stripping out the cross mark. It's just an image and some metadata. So it's not a digital rights system. But we think in future that um, uh, people will come to look to expect to see this cross mark as a sign of, of trust, just like. Uh, there are many third-party logos in industry uh, things. There's the uh, dolphin-friendly tuna, there's uh, um, organic food labels, uh, fair trade is, a, is another thing. So, with this extra Crossmark metadata that publishers will deposit with Crossmark, uh, we are planning on making that openly available. So systems, other systems, will be able to use this data to alert users to uh, uh, updates in content. This has a couple of interesting applications. One is with uh, search engines. So search engines would be able to actually, uh, on a web search, uh, and this is actually one that is using a, a plugin. So we created a plugin, it's not Google itself doing it. But what this does is it, it will highlight with the Crossmark logo uh, versions of the article, copies of the article that are on a publisher maintained website. So it's this sort of, uh, if you want the most authoritative version of that content, then you can go uh, to the publisher publisher website. Because you can see now there are five other versions of this particular article. So this doesn't stop the user from going to the other articles, so it keeps the system very open. But it just says if the user wants to go to the publisher maintained version, then they have that option. So it's not restricting what the user can do. It's Trying to add some extra information about uh, about what the user about what the user can do. So again, uh, some of the rules for this uh, participation is is, is optional. Um, when publishers join, they've got to maintain their content. Obviously, they've got to keep the metadata up to date. And we're going to have some about displaying that crossmark logo. There are going to be some some, some rules about that. Uh, and basically, any, anything with a cross-rep DOI uh, can have a, uh, a cross-mark. Uh, so it can be journal articles, book chapters, and anything the publisher wants to apply it to. Anything, so any type of content the publisher is taking responsibility for. So what's the cost? Um, to apply it to current content, it's uh, 20 cents. So new articles are 20 cents. U.S. cents, back files is uh, two cents. So that's that's it. Just uh, per DOI uh, fee. So just to highlight what publishers would actually have to do, 
we're going to have each publisher create a cross-mark policy page. So the publisher will describe their policies on corrections and retractions. Um, and it will uh, link to any of their other policies. Publishers sometimes publish their peer review policies, things like that. So publishers will have that policy page. They'll also have to deposit some extra metadata with Crossref. Um, so uh, there are only four extra fields that are required. So the DOI of the content that Crossmark is applied to, uh, there's a policy page, um, and then uh, if there are any updates, that, that has to be included in the Crossmark metadata. So what it comes down to, it's really only three or four extra fields that can then be deposited with the regular Crossref deposit uh, uh, to enable uh, the Crossmark uh, functionality. So we have created a new website. Uh, right now we're in a pilot phase. So this hasn't launched yet. So we're just experimenting with the system, but we have lots of information and, and technical stuff. Uh, but what it comes down to is uh, we are, uh, as part of this, publishers need to embed uh, some, uh, HTML, some extra information in their HTML pages. And that will enable uh, Crossmark. And we're also saying Crossmark data has to go into uh, new new PDF files. And uh, this is just an example of Crossref created a tool, which is openly available, that uses what's called XMP, which is a way of putting metadata into a PDF file. Um, and so this is just an example of uh, uh, some of the Crossmark data that can be automatically embedded in the, uh, in the PDF file. So that any search engines crawling this, anybody can index this information. And, uh, and use it. So, of course, there'll be the Crossmark logo, which will be displayed on HTML article and abstract pages, and of course in uh, PDF, PDF articles as, as well. It's very important. And we have another tool called PDF Stamp that, in a batch way, will enable the Crossmark logo to be inserted into existing PDFs. Um, but there's no requirement to go back and do old PDFs or anything like that. Um, so we're hoping to make it as easy as possible for, for publishers to do this. So a key area then also is publishers have to decide on what, if any, extra metadata they want to put in to display uh, in that crossmark tab that I showed. Um, so part of that process, publishers will have to see if they have the information available. Sometimes there are manuscript tracking systems, there are editorial systems have the information already about peer review, uh, but publishers will have to look at their systems and say, well, can I reliably get the peer review information into, uh, export it, and get it into a metadata deposit for Crossref? Um, what we're thinking is that at first, uh, if publishers participate in Crossmark, they'll just do the minimum. And again, it's just some very basic information that can be done in an automated way. Uh, and then in future, they may want to then add on extra extra information. Um, but one of the, so we've got four publishers who are starting a pilot pilot now. Uh, we're hoping within the next uh, couple of weeks uh, to go live, have one of these publishers actually go live with a cross mark on their content. Uh, we're looking right now at a, a phase two to expand it to some more publishers. Uh, and at the moment this says we're at a launch schedule for mid-2011, that's something more like the end of 2011. As often happens with these projects, um, they take a little bit longer, but we've been doing a lot of uh, usability testing. We've done research and had researchers look at examples of these articles. We've talked to librarians. Uh, we've done a lot of background work to make sure that the system uh, works as effectively as possible. So. Um, so we're hoping to launch, and I think that this has great potential. Uh, and again, it just it just ties into uh, a lot of the themes about trust and scholarly publishing, and that um, the scholarly publishing industry having this logo to help identify um, uh, publisher maintained versions of content will really help uh, distinguish scholarly content from other types of content. Uh, less 
uh, less high quality content um, on, on the internet. And so we're hoping that this is a nice um, internet friendly, uh, end user friendly way uh, to enable this, uh, enable this to happen. So.